Okay, so what we're going to do today is get some basics in uh, inventor drawings to kind of get you off your feet and get you a little bit more familiar with it. So what I did is I created what I call a weird box, which is actually just a, like a rectangular prism with a cylinder off of it, as you can see as I rotate it here a little bit. We're going to throw this into a drawing file. And to get to a drawing file, you go up to your little start menu up here, and you can either hold your mouse cursor on new. You can see there's a drawing right there, or you can click on it and choose drawing from one of these menus. And so we're going to click drawing and click OK. And you see our drawing pops up. This is one of the larger templates. It's a C template. A is the smallest. It's your standard 9 by or 8 by 11 and a half inch paper. And then B is a little bit larger, and then C is even larger than that. So we're just going to use C since it popped up. And first thing you want to do in a drawing is place your base view. And this can be done here in the Place Views tab. You see you have your annotate and you have your Place Views. Your Place Views tab, we'll click that and click Base for our base view. And what we want to do is you want to choose a file to make your base view off of. So we're going to go here into Open Existing File, which is right here. And you can see where I'm clicking. And I want to select my weird box. I will Open. And you can see it shows you a preview if you put your mouse out of this window onto your drawing template. And you see now it's quite a pretty small compared to the this sheet here. So we're gonna try we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. So we're gonna scale it up a little bit. You can do this here, it's real easy in the scale, the scale thing. You can click down the drop down, you can choose different values. And you can see ten ten to one is way huge. So we're gonna use something around three to one. It's a pretty nice value. The second thing you want to do is you want to click your orientation to make it a front view. It has front here, but I don't think I want to use that. It, I think there's better. And so I'm going to cycle through them. And I get to left, and it changes, and it kind of points at me. I, see, I like this view, so I'm going to use that. And I'm going to change it, the name from view 1 to front, just so I can keep organized. I mean, you don't have to do that, but you can if you want to. So to place the view, all I do is I click where I want it placed on the drawing. And you see it place it here. And to place orthographic views off of it, all you have to do is move your cursor, your cursor back and forth. So I will place one up here. I'll place one right here. And all I'm doing is left clicking to place. Then I'll place an isometric right there. You just right click, you click create, and it'll create your views for you. You can move this base view around, and you see these views that are related to it move around also as they need to line up. But the isometric view here does not move because it is not related to that one as such. Okay, so I'm going to move these kind of where I want them. That looks good. And you can see these views are the same, so I'm going to go ahead and right click and delete this view. Yes, I do want to delete. Okay, so that's nice. So what, I what I'm going to do first is I'm going to click my Annotate tab. You see Annotate tab is where you see all, it's where you can put your dimensions, your symbols, you can throw some text in there if you want. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this circle, uh, it disappeared on me, and I'm going to put a center mark, which is, you can find this right here. And you just scroll over it and it says center mark. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to click my circle. And voila, there you have center marks. I'm going to go back to my tab. Now I'm going to create a center line, a center line for the side view of that cylinder. I'll go up here, and click center line. All I do, I click the center line bisector, which means that you just click two lines, the outsides of the cylinder, and it'll automatically place your center line for you. It's pretty nifty. Okay, after I got that done, I'm going to place a couple dimensions. You just do that by clicking the dimension button here. And then going to your, your things that you want to dimension. So I'm going to do the width. And you see this box pops up. It's edit dimension. And it gets pretty annoying after a while. So we're just going to click that we do not want that and click OK. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see a little better and just start putting dimensions where I see them necessary. So I got the diameter. I'm going to click the circle and the edge to put a, to locate the circle. Get off that edge. You see the top view's done. There's it seems to be fully dimensioned. So I'm going to go up here to my one of my side views, and I'm going to do the overall height, and I'm going to do the height of the rectangular prism. Okay, 
that looks pretty good. I think, I think that's done. Next one I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this view to make it more presentable. As these need to be more of like a wireframe looking view, you need you can do your isometric for more of a presentation. You can make it a shaded. So to change that, you can either right click, or I need to click done first. So you can either do that by right clicking done or hitting escape. So I'm going to either right click, you can see edit view, or you can just double click on your view to edit it. And so you get back to this menu, which looks pretty familiar. And you can see you have your style. I can either do hidden line, hidden line removed, or shaded. So I'm going to click shaded here and click OK. And you see it makes it a little bit prettier. OK, next thing we want to do is worry about this title block. The title block is where you put your name. You can put the, the like a drawing number and like the title of your, of your part. So to do that, you'll go over into your tree, or what Inventor calls a browser, and you will right-click on this. says ANSI Large. Yours might be different, but it looks like a rectangle with the little title block here in the corner. You right-click on that, and you click Edit Definition. To do that, it looks like a, like a sketch, and even the sketch, the sketch tab pops up. So we're going to zoom in on this, and what you want to do, it says all these things with... Uh, little brackets around it will disappear when you finish sketch. But what you can do is you can edit them to say what you want them to say. So I'm going to right click on author and I'm going to say edit text. And you see this neat little text thing pops up. I will delete that and I will put my name. Put a little space in there. Okay. And voila, it appears. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the text of the title my weird box. Okay, my drawing number, I'm going to put the assignment number here, which I will be 20, I think it's 11, no, we're lab 7, 11, and seat number 20. I'm just putting here hypo hypothetical numbers here. Okay, so that's good. And let's see, anything else? No. Okay, we can change company, I guess, too. Let's see, we're CGT 163. And that's good. And so when you're done with that, all you need to do is go to Sketch and click Finish Sketch. Yes, you do want to save. And you see all this saved for you, and it looks very nice and presentable. So there you have it. You're done, and you've learned you know a little bit more about drawings now. All you need to do now is save your drawing. I save it as weird box, but you probably want to save it as let's see what drawing number it was. 07, 11, 27. Save and you're done. Okay, I hope you learned a little.